Hello, and welcome to tutorial 2, using loops in GarageBand on an iMac and iPad. I'm Lynnel Murphy, and I'll be taking you through the use of the green and also the blue loops on the iMac, and later on in this tutorial, also on the iPad. The main difference between using the green loops and the blue loops is that the green loops, you can actually edit and change the notes to how long or short you want them within the loop itself. So if you want a different melody within the loop, you could actually change that. If you're wanting to change a blue loop, you can't actually do that because it's a live recording and not saved as a MIDI file. However, you can cut, copy and change the quality of the sound, so changing the quality could be equalization and reverb. But we'll get into editing a blue or green loop within tutorial 5. So I've already clicked on the loop symbol up the top right hand corner and I'll just click on a drum loop that I've selected and we'll have a quick listen to it. So as you can see I can play it up here as well so if I want to play it again I don't need to actually press it within the loop section on the right hand side. So the dance bass synth 04. So as you can see, it's a matter of just clicking the green loops and dragging them onto the area there. The next instrument that I may use might be, say, a keyboard sound. So I've selected a Latin lounge piano sound. And what you can notice here is that loop is a little shorter than everything else. So if I click on that and go copy and paste, I need to click on the track I need to copy to and then paste it where the playhead is. So you need to make sure you highlight the track first or it may copy onto a different track. instrument might look for is a guitar. So I'm gradually building up. So I've gone drums, bass, piano and now I'll look for a guitar. So I'll probably use this one here and I'll drag it over to a new track and it instantly makes a new track there. So let's have a listen to all of the four loops together. As you can see, I'm adjusting the levels to how I want, so I've just changed the guitar slightly lower, the piano, bass, drums, to a slightly lower volume. It's a matter of personal preference as to how loud you want each of your tracks. So as you can see, I've just dragged a blue loop onto the screen here and I can't actually add it to those green loops so I have to add it to a new track. So the blue loop has its own track that I can work with here. I can make it shorter or longer by clicking the ends of it but with the green track if I do that see how the MIDI there it's just a blank green box at the end so it's better to just copy and paste the green loops to where they need to go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to add in an extra blue loop. So this is a clap clap beat zero one loop. And I'm going to actually split this loop in half. So if I need to zoom in and see where I'm actually splitting, I can use that tool up the top there just to zoom in on the track. Um, and especially the loop. So I'm going to aim for the start of the loop here. Okay. So the start of, say, bar four, but I want it to be right at the beginning of the clap. And I'll click split regions at playhead. And then what I can do is actually move part of that loop around. So more of these editing techniques will be covered in tutorial five, but this is to mainly give you 
a starting point as to how you can edit your loops. So let's have a listen to the whole track all together now. Using the blue loops is a little bit different on the iPad, so if I click on the loop button on the screen here, you'll notice that all the loops that I have are mainly blue coloured loops. So as you can hear and see, I've just clicked on that Delta Blues Solo 06 loop and I can adjust the length to however long or short I want that loop to go for. The next thing that I'll be doing is, once I've clicked on the loop, um, I can double tap on the actual loop. So if I double tap, and what I'm going to do is copy the loop. So I've just pressed copy. So I'll do that properly again. And then I will move the playhead to where I want that copy to go. So I don't want it to overlap the part, so I put it straight after bar 4 onto bar 5. The next thing that I'll be showing you with the blue loops is how to actually split the loop. So I'm going to find an area in this blue loop to split in half. So usually you try and find at the beginning of a waveform. So I'll just zoom in slightly more there. So I want to split this um, loop in half. So same thing, double tap and then click on split. The scissor button will come up and then you just drag it down as you can see what I've done there. And then I can move that edited part around if I need to. Before I create a green loop, I'm just going to mute this blue track, so electric guitar track, and delete unnecessary tracks that I don't need. So I've just clicked on the track, double tapped, and the next thing that I want to do is select my smart guitar instrument. So I'm going to record a green loop using the smart guitar. So I can just click on the, the chords if I need to. But I'm going to select autoplay number two and record a chord progression. So just C, G, A minor, F. And you'll notice that I'm just changing the chords every bar and it's in time with the metronome. So it's slightly gone over bar 5 and what I want to do is just trim the edge of that loop so it's just to the end of bar 4. If I want to copy, same thing, double tap, select copy, then paste where you've got your cursor. If I want to edit the loop, remembering that if I double tap on the loop and click edit, I can change the notes within that autoplay 2 function that I actually used. So more of these editing techniques of changing notes, so editing mistakes out of your recordings will be covered more in tutorial 5.